My opponent made the claim that one of the problems with the, uh, or the, my opponent made the claim that the 20% um, at the bottom is not the same as 20% at the top. However, I think one of the problems with this claim is that, you know, adopting an ideology like that in effect tends to penalize success. Stats given on bankrate.com uh, showed us that they, they use uh, examples. If you're earning $36,000 a year, you'll be taxed $5,500 that year. Because of the tax bracket, if you earn $37,000, you'll be taxed over $9,000. And that's a $4,000 jump for a person of moderate income. Professor Daniel J. Mitchell tells us that a flat tax no longer penalizes success. A wealthy taxpayer with a thousand times the income of a taxable income of another one would pay a thousand times that in taxes. And there's evidence to show that this works in the real world and benefits the economy. Investopedia gave us examples of Baltic states that adopted the flat tax, and then they showed rapid growth in the years from 2001 to 2007. And other stats on trading economics show that they were able to maintain these impressive growth, well, impressive growth rates into 2014, showing 1.1% uh, growth compared to you know the Netherlands and the UK. They only had a, a half percent growth. In addition to this, the flat tax has the potential to bring these uh, this econ economic growth to the United States. Governor Rick Perry tells us that. A flat tax has the potential to unleash economic growth, not only to give families more money to spend, but provide employers with strong incentives to grow uh, and create millions of jobs. In addition to this, Forbes magazine confirmed this by uh, giving us evidence that businesses are moving to states that have adopted flat taxes because they know that's what they need. It's, it's an incentive that helps business grow, uh, businesses grow. My opponent also made the uh, claim that taxes are only as complex as you make them. Now, I find it hard to believe that no matter how you look at it, you know, no matter how you look at it, a tax code that, thousand, that is thousands of pages long is still going to be hard to understand. According to uh, Governor Burgers, even the IRS, oh yeah, my, my partner mentioned it, even the IRS Commissioner Doug Schulman has said, I find the tax code complex, so I used to prepare. Now, nevertheless, I suppose it is the case you can make it uh, simple if you choose not to file um, itemize your deductions or if you use an easy form, but that in itself is one of the main problems of the progressive tax system. When you do that, you're not claiming the benefits that you're entitled to, and that's where a lot of the, you know, that's where a lot of the reasons why the progressive tax is unfair. According to, uh, to CNN, two out of three Americans choose not to itemize their deductions, and that means that they are not entitled to the myriad of benefits that are within our tax code due to special interest groups. Another statement by Governor Kate Carey tells us that a flat tax, like the compliance cost of flat tax for Americans just in money each year is $300 billion. And that's not considering the time that people take to do their taxes. Adopting a flat tax will simplify the problem. Like it won't only simplify the problem, but it will give that $300 billion back to Americans. So if we look at it that way, a progressive tax in a sense gives us three options. We can spend our time trying to learn the tax code. We can spend our money hiring somebody else to do it for us, or we can just choose not to accept our benefits. One of the last points my opponent addressed was uh, loopholes. Now, I won't deny that. It is, it is indeed a fact that a loophole is a force that can, you, you can use to reduce your tax, uh, tax burden, but I hardly think that a loophole is something that we, sh uh, we should consider something that makes taxes more fair. When loopholes are used in a lot of sense, they're not really used, they're abused. CNN gave us an example. Barack Obama makes $800,000 a year, and he's taxed at a percentage that's slightly less than his secretary, who makes $100,000 uh, $100, a year. It's just under 20%. In addition to this, Mitt Romney makes $21 million a year, but because the majority of his income comes from stocks, he's only taxed at 15%. I hardly think that it's appropriate that somebody who makes millions, millions of dollars a year is taxed at a rate of somebody who makes $20,000 a year. However, one of the most prominent abusers of tax loopholes are large American corporations. Governor Rick Perry tells us that American corporate tax is, one, is the second highest in the developed world, and it's riddled with loopholes that allow the biggest companies with the best lawyers to avoid paying any taxes at all. It's estimated that the tax burden is about 22.5%, 25.2%, and some of the largest corporations like General Electric and Wells Fargo pay no taxes at all. 
if you look at, you have to look at it this way, they can afford to get people to read the entire tax code. Middle class Americans can't do that, or they can't have, afford the time to do that. Finally comes the issue of uh, interpreting the tax code. The magazine Political gave us a study where they asked 45 tax professionals to give a hypothetical um, tax liability to for a family, right? Every single one returned a different estimate, ranging from $36,000 all the way up to $94,000. If we can't get experts that can do this job properly, we can't expect ourselves to do it. And if the expert can't do it, who are we going to turn to? However, turning to a flat tax eliminates all these problems. It allows us to say, you owe 20% now, and you don't have to question whether you owe more or less. It's a simple calculation. Implementing a flat tax is one of the, <clears throat> yeah. Implementing a flat tax is the next step for economic growth in America. It's been shown in the Baltic states, it's been shown in statewide tax, and it's the next step for our economy.